Hello and welcome back to Pucks to Tony. This is episode three. Now, as you can see, I've had a little bit of a tidy up round here. I've got rid of a few of my chests, reorganized things a little bit. And, you know, just generally made things look a little bit better. Still lots of work to be done in the area. Like I've sort of moved my little furnace thing there. And at the moment it's burning up some smooth stone. And I've still got my little um, sugarcane, automatic sugarcane farm at the back there. I'm going to move that over here somewhere. A little bit closer to the center so it can feed straight into one of the chests. And make it out of a slightly nicer looking brick as well. And well, today that's kind of what we're going to do. We're going to go around, fix up a few things, like get the cow farm organized the way that I want it to be, get the little sugarcane farm set up the way that I want it to be. And I suppose the the big question for anybody who's following this series so far, or looking back and following the series, who knows, time travel, all that kind of thing, um, is going to be on the fr on the slime front. So let's see what we've got. I've got five slime. <laughs> now, three of those I already had in the previous episode. And I actually found out what the problem was. And I'm not going to get much more slime this episode. The problem was I had my render distance turned right down so that I'd get the maximum performance from the game. The trouble is with that, um, outside the render distance, things weren't spawning. So I wasn't getting any spawns on the slime farm or in the slime chunk or anything like that. So I actually spent quite a lot of time in the creative world, having a look around, trying to work it out, work out what was going wrong, getting no spawns at all. Had a look on a wiki, blah, blah, blah. Ended up um, just finding the answer on a random page saying, you know, no spawns, probably got your render distance turned down. And that, that was absolutely right. I had my render distance right down just to try and save on some CPU and memory and all that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, it's working. It is working. It's pretty slow, but that's kind of what I expect at the moment because I've I've actually got the levels in there three apart. So if we go down and have a little look. So the levels are sort of three blocks apart. Now the big slimes will spawn in a three block gap, um, but that doesn't give them much room to jump around or do anything really. So I sort of want to come back down here, take these floors back out and replace them with slabs. So I want to slab this entire area. Also, I want to get rid of a lot of these torches and generally light it up in a slightly different way. Um, just generally make it look a lot prettier. Make it look a lot nicer. That's the big thing there. Um, but this was a very big project, very ambitious for a first episode. Um, and it took quite a long time. I say first episode, first proper episode. So yeah, that took quite a long time to get through and it is working. What I need to do is I need to turn my render distance up, go off AFK, leave it do its thing, come back and hopefully I'll have quite a bit of slime. But there's a lot of efficiencies that I can make in there, like I can add some iron golems to each side at each level so that the um, slimes get drawn to the iron golems, fall down and then get processed much more quickly. Um, but that's all, that's all for another day. Today we're going to first start off by fixing up this. So, perfect timing. It's all just gone off now, so there's nothing in there to escape. I'm just going to grab the slime and do that real quick fix now. Let's see. Oh gosh, I forget where everything is. So, what do I need? I need some redstone, which I've actually got over here in like my precious chest. Might as well make six pistons. I only need one, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a bit more than what you need. Um, six pistons times four is going to be 24, 24 pieces of that. And then I need some wood. Do I have any wood? Yes, I've got lots of wood. So one, two, three, four, that should be more than enough. So let's have a look. Uh, yeah, let's do it this like that. And then across the top there. Perfect. Six pistons. Now. I might as well just make up two of these straight away in sticky pistons. And round the back here, I'm going to pull out all of this red, all of this extra blockage that I've got. And that one, although actually that one can stay. That one can stay. Um, right. 
where do I begin? I need a slab. I need a slab here as well. Ooh, can't leave that one behind. So, did I have some smooth stone? Yeah, I want. I want to use some smooth stone. Into more than enough. So first things first, we want to put the piston like that. Um, this is probably going to throw out a sink, but you know what the heck, doesn't matter that much. So what I'm building up here is just something which is going to make sure that when I send a pulse, oh when hmm, what I want this to do is flick a lever rather than um, what it's doing currently which is press a button. So, I need another block. Do I have another block? Yeah, I can get away with that. Let's just put one there like that. So yeah, if let me go around the front and explain a little bit. So this is actually one which I made up on the tutorial and what I want there is not a button. I want a lever instead. Now, levers are very cheap, but I don't Gosh, I don't have any of the stuff that I need. Levers are an extremely cheap way of powering things. So let's go grab a piece of cobblestone. I should just grab a stack, shouldn't I? I keep going to the wrong chest. I haven't got used to this yet. I've basically just finished it now and then came on and did this. So a lever is very simple. A stick and a cobblestone. Now, the reason that I want the lever is because then I can have it in either like one position for the feeding or one position for doing the cooking. So let's go around the back and get that wired up. I'm doing all this on camera. Goodness knows why. First time for everything. Just need a repeater. Yeah, that's all I need, just a repeater. It's quite cheap, to be honest. So I want the repeater there. I'm going to need more redstone than this. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Let's just throw a block down. Let's go get some redstone first, then throw a block down, then climb up and do the rest of the redstone in. Uh, there. Do it from this side because it's closer. So I want redstone right over the top of all of this. And that should be it. So let's take that back out. Go around the front and see if you can see what I mean. Oh gosh, that's a noise. Right, so like that. If I switch it, then I get the water. And if I switch it back, I get the lava. So it's either in one position or the other. And I, I don't know, I just prefer that to the button. It also doesn't power this trapdoor, so the trapdoor stays in position. So yeah, that's all done now. That's exactly how I wanted it. It's semi-automatic to a degree. I'll just grab some wheat whilst I'm here. And give those cows a feed. Let's see. There we go, it's into the feeding position. Give them some food. Get a little bit of XP. There we go, let's just get that down from there. I need to work out a slightly better way for the XP to come down. I hadn't really figured on that when I first designed it, I just kind of figured that you'd, everyone would have their own little XP farm. So. I'm going to ignore that one for now because I don't have enough slime to do what I really want to do with that. Um, which is obviously to replace a lot of the pistons with slime blocks and just get it working slightly better. Although I've got two bits of slime, I could put a hopper clock in rather than the repeater clock and get the timing slightly better. But you know, that's not for now. I think the first thing that I want to do now is to get back down below and find that zombie spawner which we came across when we we're setting this up and we'll get that organized to sort of start grinding out some XP for us. So I'm going to get to that now. So here it is. This is a very quick before shot and we'll cut back in a moment for an after shot.
and here is the after shot so as you can see I've cleared out the room get back cleared out the room a little bit on each side so there's a gap of four between the spawn and each wall and then three above and three below um, I've put the blocks on top so that you don't get any spawns on top of there set the water in at the back so it flushes everything forward and then set another couple of water streams coming in from each side to push them into the middle now I'll just knock out that torch close the door Ooh, that's not a very effective door I need to move that um, and show you the rest of it let's just um, can I put it there no it needs solid block underneath it I might as well fill this in now um, because it's basically done I don't need access to that anymore this is where they are going to be gathered up ready for the killing so basically I'm taking them up 24 blocks coming across dropping them bang they go down to around about half a heart I'm probably going to lose one or two I've, I've been testing this and it seems like zombies have got slightly different healths at times but we'll see we'll see maybe I'm wrong maybe that hasn't been changed this is where I'm holding them at the moment. I'm just been, as you can see from my levels, but I've been picking them off as I go. And then if I jump up here, we can have a little look. It's going to be extremely dark. And I'm going to have to be careful of not falling off at the top and dying. There we go. So that's where they come up. They get pushed across into that little gap and go straight down the drop so it's about time I tested this I haven't got anything set up yet to pick off the small zombies the baby zombies um, but normally what I do with that kind of thing is I just let them flush a little bit further forward so that these guys can't pass this point but the little zombies do go past that point because they're getting pushed forward and then I get them to get pulled off into some lava, drop them in some lava a little bit, a little bit away. In fact, I could just drop them straight down some lava here. Um, but yeah, let's have a go at this first. So what I'm going to want to do is go down a little bit. Get rid of that door, it's not needed anymore. And I need a water source in there. And then I need to remove these two trap doors I might just be able to get away with opening them so can I do that yeah so I've got a water source on me let's take that out probably gonna get kicked by a zombie go on get back right that's what I want so up they go I'm gonna just pop a sign in there Oh no, I've got to break this first. Now I want to use signs instead of trapdoors because trapdoors have actually got kind of a large hitbox. So things get caught on them quite easily. Now why isn't anybody coming forward? Well, we'll, we'll see about that in a moment. Um, ba -ba -ba. Let's just put in some blocks there so that no baby zombies get pushed through and land on me. And there we go, that's our first contestant. Now I'm just going to go up and have a little look in and see if I can see why the other ones weren't getting pushed forward. I mean, they look like they should be. There's a lot of them there. They're not. They're not quite get, getting down the little water stream properly. Go on, get back with you. Yeah, maybe what I need to do is go and have a check into this. Because I've got one straight away, and that seems like a, a reasonable little start. But maybe I need to check into what's going on here and why they're not going all... Why they're not coming forward. Yeah, nobody's getting to this point. I wonder why that is. Okay, I'm going to have a look, and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I found the problem. It was because I hadn't put a sign right there Oi. yeah they're giving me a kick as they go past there's meant to be a sign right there and I'd forgot that so now they're all getting pushed forward nicely into the water stream going straight up um, next I need to deal with the baby zombies 
which may be quite simple because just trying to sort this out I had a little look and oh there's water everywhere down there now <laughs> there was lava a moment ago okay so I need to find a bucket put some lava in it and put it down there and then that's it job done so this is it all finished um, I've been stood here for a little while just letting the number of zombies build up and as you can see there are quite a lot there I'm just gonna have a little look and see if we can see number of entities 130 so quite a few let's just see how it goes <laughs> only got one that time right and that's it all of the XP And there we go, that's put us up to 37 levels. So that's all working. I've kind of created myself a little AFK space here and somewhere to pick up all the drops and, you know, an extra chest just because sometimes I like to put my stuff in there whilst I'm AFK just in case some, something escapes somehow. And here we are back above the surface. Um, we've got our zombie spawner all organised down there now. And um, we've got the little cow and leather thing sorted the way that I want it to be working. Um, now at the beginning of the episode you probably saw that little excerpt of the slimes going into the killing chamber and I just wanted to show you that it's all been working properly since since the slight hiccup from the last episode. Oh there we go, there's some going in right now. So that's five full stacks of slime, um, which is fantastic. That's going to be more than enough for what I need. We're still going to go down there in the future and get it all cleaned up and tidied. Um, but in the next episode what we're going to have a look at is getting the sugarcane farm sorted we're going to get a couple of zombie villagers from down below up to the surface cure them and get them breeding and do a little bit of villager trading see what we get and yeah we've got lots and lots of things to do so i hope you enjoyed the episode if you've enjoyed the episode please do leave a like if you're looking forward to the next episode please subscribe and you'll be the first people to find out about the new episodes being released and if you have any questions or anything like that, please do leave a comment. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. Okay, thank you very much and see you again.